Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling bright and blessed this morning, adoring the Lord Jesus and hungry for a word from God. Now, today is November the 26th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, we're continuing our study through the book of Hebrews, and today we find ourselves in a favorite of many, chapter 11. It is a beloved chapter and one that reminds us of many of the stories that we have read throughout the Old Testament. Now, I trust that if you have read these stories, this will be a reminder to you as well. If not, you'll go back and read these stories, for they are full of beauty and truth and guidance and direction that will help us in our journey in following and trusting the Lord whom we serve. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 11, and let's actually pick up in chapter 10, verse 38, for this is what the entire chapter is about. Verse 38 says, the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we, the people of God, are not of those who draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So the context is faith. The just, those chosen by God, those who choose to follow the Lord, they live by faith. Now in chapter 11, verse 1, he's going to explain to us what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is simply taking God at his word, regardless of what you can see, taste, feel, smell, or touch. Now it tells us in verse 2, the elders obtained a good report through faith. And the elders would be those that we read about throughout the Old Testament. It is through faith, believing in things not seen, not explained to us by the hand of science, that we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God that God spoke and the worlds came into existence. In verse 4, and we're going to move quickly through these because I trust that you know these stories or you'll go back and read them on your own. But in verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. There was no commandment to do so. There was no law to follow. But because of the love that Abel had for God and because Abel understood that God was his provider, By faith he offered a sacrifice unto him. By faith, in verse 5, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. By faith, in verse 7, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, the flood to come, in other words, he was moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance. God simply said, go, Abraham. Didn't even tell Abraham where he was going. And yet Abraham, because he believed in God, he trusted in God, he went. Verse 9, he sojourned in the land of promise, in a strange country. Verse 11, through faith Sarah received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Which if you recall the story, she was around 90 years old when she conceived Isaac. The promised child who would be a father of a nation. And they believed this because they trusted God. They didn't see it come to fruition, but they trusted God and knew that it would come to pass. By faith, Abraham in verse 17, when he was tried by the Lord, he offered up Isaac. And he did this because of faith. The next few verses are going to tell us because he understood that if he did kill Isaac, God would have to raise him from the dead because God had to be faithful to his promise. And that's what it tells us in verse 19. In verse 20, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come, things not yet seen. By faith, in verse 23, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months by his parents. Why? Because they understood and they trusted and they believed in God that a deliverer would come for his people. 
And Moses in verse 25 chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Rather live in the pleasures of the house of Pharaoh and all that it offered unto him, Moses chose to venture out into the wilderness and suffer with the people of God because he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures that Egypt offered. So in verse 27, he forsook Egypt, trusting in the one who is invisible. Through faith, he kept the Passover. Verse 29, through faith, the people of Israel traveled through the Red Sea as on dry land. In verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Verse 31, through faith, Rahab the harlot was delivered by the very spies in whom which she had delivered. And what shall I more say in verse 32, the writer of Hebrews says, for the time would fail me. There's not enough ink. There's not enough room on the page to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and all the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire. You'll remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, they were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. They turned to flight the enemies of the Lord. There were women who received their dead raised to life again and others who were tortured. They did not accept deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. There were others who had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, of bonds and imprisonment. Some were stoned, were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. They were destitute. They were afflicted. They were tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Notice when we mention these things, there is no mention of popularity, of fame, of fortune, of success. But the people of God suffered greatly. And so that should be a reminder to us that we too, as the people of God, are going to suffer greatly. He's not promised us riches and fortune. He's not promised us a happy life on this earth. He's promised us pain, misery, and suffering. And anything beyond that is by his mercy and grace. It continues in verse 38 and says, They wandered in deserts, in mountains, in dens, in caves of the earth. And these whom we read about in the Old Testament in verse 39 have obtained a good report through faith because they trusted God. Yet they did not receive the promise. Now, if we flip back to verse 6, it tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. So these whom we've just discussed pleased God because they trusted in him regardless of what they could see, touch, taste, feel, or hear. And the reason that they lived their lives in faith, in trusting God, and even in verse 13, they died in faith, not receiving the promises, but having seen them afar off through the eye of faith, and they were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed, that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. They understood that they belonged to God, not to this world. And God had a promise of a better place to live for them, and it was not this world. It was the world to come. They seek a country in verse 14. And verse 15 tells us if they had been mindful of the country, the world in which they lived, which God had delivered them from, they might have had opportunity to return back to the world. But as we read in chapter 10, verse 38, the just live by faith. And if any man draw back to the world, which he has been delivered from, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to the world in which we have been delivered from. But as Moses in chapter 11, verse 25, we would rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And not to confuse you, but back to chapter 10, verse 39, this is what causes us to be believers and will result in the saving of our souls. Now, all the promises that are given throughout the Old Testament have been fulfilled. Yet there is one promise that we as the people of God are still looking for, and that is the second return of the Messiah, of the promised one who will come to restore back to the earth 
its original states and properties as it was in the early days of creation and rid this world of Satan, of sin, of suffering, and of the penalty and judgment that comes through the disobedience of God. We will receive new bodies, be glorified as the Lord Jesus, and live in a perfect state of peace and harmony with all of creation. Not just mankind, but the beast of the earth, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea. And we will be restored back to the original state of man with bodies and minds that match perfection. And so we will eternally live with our Lord. And out of all the promises that are given in the Old Testament, friend, there is none greater. For this is what all creation groans for, for Jesus to restore all things back to perfection. And I trust today, friends, that's what your soul is longing for, and that you are not looking for evidences through science and what men offer, but through faith, through the eye of faith. You are resting upon the substance of things that you hope for and the evidence of things that you have not seen. You are trusting and believing in God simply because he says it is so. And as those who have gone on before us, you are strangers and pilgrims on the earth, and you see yourself as such. And you count it a privilege to be considered not worthy of this world, because you walk as a child of God through this world, looking for and anticipating great things that are promised and still yet to come. And so what we see through this chapter today is that faith is the most simplest basic thing that even a child can understand, and yet it is so profound in its truth that even through a lifetime on earth, we have barely began to scratch the surface of what it means to exercise faith and trust in our Almighty God. Jesus said, faith the size of a mustard seed among the smallest of all seeds, can move mountains. If that is true, friends, think about what having the faith of the Lord Jesus unto the Father is able to do. May that be our prayer today, friends. Not that we can do great things upon this earth, but as John chapter 17, verse 3 says, Truly we will know God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, whom He has sent. And that is only possible, friends, through the eye of faith. Well, I trust that you'll have a blessed day in the Lord Jesus today, that your mind will be upon the things that are important to him and his kingdom, and that you will seek to know him and trust him even more today than you have in days gone by. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you, and I'll see you on the next video.